Hello friends, welcome to Fears Cloud Learn to Lead. Good morning to all the students. Today we will discuss very important current fears of 26th and 27th of June 2022. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current fear. So watch this video till last. But first of all, you have to download our application Careers Cloud from the Google Play Store. After that, log in with your email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But the most important thing, what we are covering under this one year and the two year subscription, we are providing you daily section. In the daily section, you will receive three things. One is the detailed current fair. Second is the question and answer format of current fairs, but both will be provided in the form of PDF or in the form of ebook. And third is the quiz section and this can be attempted only on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, we are providing three things. One is the detailed current fair. Second is the question and answer format. But both things will be provided in the PDF format. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. Next is the monthly section and in the monthly section we are providing you four type of PDFs. One is the detailed current fair PDF which is known as study PDF. Next all the detailed current fairs will be converted in the form of question and answer. That's why it is known as question and answer PDF so that you can revise all the current fairs in the question and answer format. Next is the best 100 current fairs will be provided that is also provided in the form of question and answer and last is the pocket PDF. It means one liner, two liner or the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs very quickly before your exam. Next is topic wise current fair. This is very important section because we are providing 20 most important topic wise PDF. If you want to revise one or two particular topics, then you can use this topic wise PDF. If you are a banking student, then we are providing three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format of current fairs, but only related to banking and economy. And third is the quiz section. It is also only related to banking and economy. And you can attempt this quiz section only on our application on monthly basis. Next is exam PDF. If you want to cover all the current fairs before your exam of particular year, then you can use this exam PDF. Next is special current fair section. In the special current fair, we are providing you budget and economic survey. Two things we are providing. One is detail budget and economic survey. Second is question and answer format of budget and economic survey. It means you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey. If you are preparing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing state current fairs and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under only one subscription. First of all, you have to just download our application careers cloud, then click on this crack current fair section and you can subscribe for one year as well as for two years. And if you want 10% extra discount, then you can use this code ASH10. If you have any query, then you can email us on this email ID or you can call us on this number. So let's start 26th and 27th of June 2022 current fairs. But first of all, you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group so that you can get the latest information on our telegram channel and also you can attempt quiz on daily basis on this channel and you can join this channel from the description box link. Here is the first question in the most important section. Who will become the new CEO or the chief executive officer of Niti Ayog? So this organization is most important and answer of this question is Parmeshwaran Ayer. So C is the answer. So appointment committee of the cabinet has approved the appointment of Parmeshwaran Ayer in 1980 batch IAS officer of Uttar Pradesh cadre as the chief executive officer of Niti Ayog and he is appointed for the time period of two years or until further orders. And you can also remember that earlier this position was with Amitabh Kant. This is again very important. Amitabh Kant, who was 1980 batch retired IAS officer of Kerala cadre, took over as the CEO of Niti Ayog in the year of 2016. And in June 2021, he was given a one year extension till June 2022. It means he was appointed for the time period of 2016 to 2022 for the time period of six years. So you can also see here the picture of Parmeshwaran Ayer, who is appointed as the CEO of Niti Ayog. So he takes over as the new CEO of Niti Ayog, succeeding Amitabh Khan, who is set to complete his six year stint as the CEO of Niti Ayog by the end of June 2022. And Parmeshwaran Ayer took voluntary retirement from IS in the year of 2019 after completing his 17 years of service. 
and after his voluntary retirement he worked with the world bank as a water and sanita uh, sanitation specialist and in 2016 he was appointed as the secretary of the ministry of drinking water and sanitation and in 2020 he resigned from the post of the secretary now he is appointed as the new ceo of the niti aayog earlier this position was with the amita kant and you can also remember about niti aayog niti aayog was formed by a resolution of the union cabinet on 1st of jan 2015 and its chairman is prime minister and prime minister is currently narendra modi ji and uh, who is the vice chairperson vice chairperson is suman bari you can see is the first option suman bari is currently the vice chairman of this uh, niti aayog and its headquarters is in new delhi so you can also remember the other appointments like vinay kumar saxena he is recently appointed as the lieutenant or the lieutenant governor of delhi again very important position next is sangeeta singh she is appointed as the chairman of cbdt cbdt stand for center board of direct taxes move into next question who has won the women's prize for the fiction 2022 very simple question very static question but this question is most important and answer of this question is ruth ozeki so d is the answer so ruth ozeki who is american canadian author and also the film maker and zen buddhist priest and has won the women prize for the fiction 2022 and it is for her novel titled as the book of form and emptiness and 2022 marks the 27th anniversary of the women's prize for fiction and uh, this award is important you can remember the award recognizes any woman writing in english irrespective of her nationality country of residence age or subject matter and the award with 30000 pound 30000 pound or you can say almost 36000 usd given to this lady named as ruth ozeki and the award recognizes the novel published in the uk between 1st of april in the year the prize and the 31st march the following year so you have to just remember women prize for fiction 2022 awarded to ruth ozeki who is very famous american canadian author and it is for her book or the novel titled as the book of form and emptiness move into next section next section is our very important question section but first of all you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can attempt quiz on daily basis and you can also get very best information on our telegram channel here is the first question in the very important section who authored a book named as the gautam adani the man who changed india so just remember the name of the book gautam adani the man who changed india this book is written by very famous business journalist r n baskar so answer of this question is a r n baskar and uh, this book is the biography of gautam adani who is the founder and chairman of adani group i think all the students know about gautam adani and you can also see here the picture of gautam and the book is published by penguin business imprint the part of the penguin random house india and the book features the unknown aspects of the gautam adani one of the richest man in the world and a most successful first generation business leaders so just remember the name gautam adani the man who changed india this book is authored by very famous business journalist r n baskar so now we are moving to the next question who won men's single title in the indonesia's open 2022 why this question is very important because we are talking about very important tournament this is indonesia open 2022 and first of all you have to remember this tournament is related to badminton and uh, in the men's category who won this title this is victor axelson so answer of this question is b so indonesian open 2022 was held from 14 to 19th of june in jakarta in the capital of indonesia and it was one of the tournaments in 2022 badminton world federation world tour so in the women's category this title was won by tai zu eng so answer of this question is c so you have to remember both men's and the women's title men title was won by victor axelson and women single title was won by tai zu eng and you can see here victor axelson retains the men single title and tai zu eng won the women's title and victor selson from denmark won this men single title against china and became tops in the men single world tour ranking and in the men's category you can also remember that indian made shuttler hs pranoy hs pranoy went semi final and lost his game against china's player and after this tournament hs pranoy lost his top spot and finished second in the men single sports world tour ranking 
and in the women's category the second seed and the Tokyo 2020 Olympic silver medalist Tai Zhu Ying from Chinese Taipei defeated 2022 Asian champion Wang Yi Yi of the China to claim the women's single title. So you don't have to remember this detail. Just remember from the Indian side, it was H S Pranay who went semi-final but lost his game against China's Zhou. But uh, don't remember any player name. Just remember the men's single title won by Victor Xelson and uh, women's single title was won by Tai Zhou Ying. And from Indian side, Indian made shuttler H S Pranay went in semi-final but he lost match against China's player. Moving to next question. Bharat Electronics Limited signed a memorandum of understanding with which country's firm for the supply of airborne defense suit. So again, this question is static, but just remember the question as same as in slide, and this is Belarus company. So answer of this question is A. So Bharat Electronics Limited, which is also known as BEL, it is a defense public sector unit under the Ministry of Defense under the Government of India, has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Defense Initiatives of Belarus and the Defense Initiatives Aero Private Limited, which is a subsidiary of Defense Initiatives Belarus. So just remember, this is a firm belong to Belarus, and the MOU also aims to explore various business opportunities for India. So, Bharat Electronics Limited signed a deal with Belarusian firm for supply of airborne defense suit for Indian Air Force helicopters. So, in accordance with the Make in India initiative, this Bharat Electronics Limited will serve as the prime contractor and get support from the get support from the defense initiatives with respect to the transfer of technology like manufacturing and maintenance for the supply of advanced electronic warfare suit for the helicopters. And the MOU calls for the three companies to collaborate on the supply of airborne defense system for the Indian Air Force helicopters. And this Air Force defense suit is based or the used for providing protection to the helicopters. So just remember, this is Bharat Electronics Limited, and second company is Defense Initiatives of Belarus, who signed a memorandum of understanding to provide or to supply this airborne defense suit. And remember, what Belarus? Belarus capital is Minsk. And the currency is Belarusian ruble. Moving to next question: Which network collaborated with Center for Development of Telematics, which is also known as CDOT, to develop indigenous 5G RAN products and solution? And RAN stands for Radio Access Network. And this company is Galore Network. So answer of this question is C. And Galore Network headquarters is in Karnataka. So the Center for Development of Telematics under the Research and Development Division of the Department of Telecommunication under the Ministry of Communication and Galore Networks have signed an agreement to boost the indigenous development of end-to-end -end 5G or the fifth generation radio access network products and solutions. So the partnership will serve as a catalyst for the indigenous design, development, manufacture, and deployment of 5G products and solutions that are cost-effective. Additionally, by combining both the technological know-how and complementary skills, Indian research and development industry will be able to develop new intellectual property assets that will open up new opportunities for the extensive and global commercialization of their indigenous technology. So, Galore Networks will offer its whole range of commercially field deployable 4G and 5G. Non-standalone assess and standalone assess macro and micro-based solutions integrated with the C dot. So this is again very important because this partnership will create 5G products for Indian as well as the global tier one telecom operators, critical networks, and private networks, highlighting the underlying potential of the India's immense technological prowess. So in simple words, just remember it is just to develop indigenously 5G RAN products and solutions in India. So moving to next question, who has been appointed as the CEO or Chief Executive Officer of the India Debt Resolution Company, which is also known as IDRCL? Very important question for the banking students. And remember, the name is Chief Ashwini Kulkarni. So answer of this question is A. So Ashwini Kulkarni, who is currently the Chief Executive Officer of the India Resurgence Asset Reconstruction Company, which is also known as IRARC, now has been appointed as the CEO of India Debt Resolution Company, and he is appointed for the time period of three years. So he is set to take over as the new CEO of this company from the current CEO Manish Makaria. You can also remember the former name Manish Makaria ji. Manish Makaria ji will retire in July 2022, and new CEO will be Avinash Kulkarni. So you can see here the name Chief Executive Officer of India Resurgence Asset Reconstruction Companies, Avinash Kulkarni, 
will also head this India Debt Resolution Company Limited. And uh, with this appointment, the key executives are in the place to start the consolidation of the bad loans from the banks through the National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited. And unlike National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited, this India Debt Resolution Company does not require the approval of the Reserve Bank of India for the appointment of the CEO. But you have to remember this India Debt Resolution Company, it is a private sector company controlled by the private sector banks that own almost 51% share. And this is a seven member board of IDRCL, which is headed by Divankar Gupta, Divankar Gupta, former managing director of the SBI. Moving to next question. Ship-borne weapon system VLSRSAM successfully flight tested in Odisha. It is a dash vehicle. So just remember on the 24th of June 2022 an indigenously developed vertical launch VL stands for vertical launch SRSAM stands for short range surface to air missile. So again this is very important this is surface to air missile and answer of this question is B. So this is flight tested by the Defense Research and Development Organization and the Indian Navy from a warship at integrated test range in the Chandipur off the coast of Odisha. So this is ship borne weapon system which is known as VLSRSM successfully flight tested of Odisha coast and it is a ship borne weapon system to neutralize various aerial high speed air borne targets at the range of 40 km to the 50 km at an altitude of around 15 km including sea skimming targets and the design is based on the Astra missile which is beyond visual range and it is air to air missile and it is developed by the DRDO facilities. So just remember this is vertical launch short range surface to air missile and it is flight tested at the cost of Odisha. Move into next question. Reserve Bank of India extends card tokenization deadline by dash. So Reserve Bank of India extended the card on file or COF tokenization deadline by another three months, it means till the month of September or the last date of September, 30th of September 2022, earlier this was 30th of June 2022 and it is for all the payment system providers and the payment system participants. So this is the third time that RB has extended this deadline for this implementation. And first of all, you have to remember the main important keyword here is card tokenization. So RBI mandated to store customer's card information in a form of encrypted form which is known as COFT, it is card on file tokenization to secure tokenization. So COF turns sensitive cardholder data into a randomly generated 16 digit number called token with no meaningful value if breached and these tokens then allow payments to be processed without disclosing any customer detail. Now the deadline is 30th of September 2022. So next question is from picture Railway Minister Ashwini Vaishnavji launched e-auction for the commercial earning non-fair revenue contract. So this is not important. This is just information for you that Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav, Union Minister of Railways launched the e-auction for the commercial earning as well as for non-fair revenue contracts in the railway bhavan in New Delhi. So this launch was made to bring commercial earning and NFR contracts under the ambit of electronic auction through the Indian Railway e-procurement system which is known as IREPS in line with the prevailing e-auction of the scrap scale. So it means the earning assets up for the auction will be parcel vans like pay and the used toilets, advertisement rights on the station circulating areas and coaches, air conditioned waiting rooms clock rooms, parking lots, plastic bottle crushers, ATM, station co-branding and video screening for the content on demand. So these assets will be mapped location wise on the portal once and the system will remember forever it is covered for the earning or not. So this can be more useful for the railways and it will be the it will be very beneficial for the railways for the earning prospectus. So you have to just remember this news from the slide. Now we are moving to the next question. Next question is in the important question section. But first of all, you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram channel from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time. Here is the question. Which date is annually observed as the United Nation Day of the Seafarer? So this day is not so much important but just remember this day is observed every year on 25th of June. So answer of this question is D 
and it is to create awareness about the seafarers and the challenges they face. So the day also offers a platform to pay tribute to the seafarers recognizing the risk they take in the execution of their daily life and their duties in the hostile environment. And 25th of June 2022 marks the observance of 12th day of the seafarer. And the observance of the day of the seafarer is led by the International Maritime Organization whose headquarters is in London. Move into next question. What is the theme for World Vitiligo Day? Again, this day is not so much important, but just remember this day is every year observed on 25th of June to create awareness about vitiligo, a long term skin condition caused due to lack of melanin. And what is the theme? Theme is learning to live with vitiligo. So A is the answer. So the day is also aims to include recognition of bullying, social neglect and psychological trauma and disability of the people affected by vitiligo. And the international theme is learning to live with vitiligo. And World Vitiligo Day is also known as Vitiligo Awareness Day. And it is also known as Vitiligo Purple Fund Day as purple is the official color representing this condition. Now the question arises, what is vitiligo? So vitiligo also called lipoderma, is a skin disorder characterized by patches of the skin losing their pigment. And the word vitiligo is derived from two words. One is vitium. Vitium stands means defect or blemish. And uh, you have to just remember this day is observed on 25th of June. Moving to the last question. This is Tamil Nadu Advanced Manufacturing Conclave which is observed on 24th of June 2022 in Chennai. So MK Stalinji who is the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu launched a number of initiatives during this Tamil Nadu Advanced Manufacturing Conclave 2022 which was held at Taramani. Remember the exact place Taramani is in Chennai, Tamil Nadu to help industry adopt new technology and remain competitive. And by the year of 2030, the state of Tamil Nadu aspires a $1 trillion economy, $1 trillion economy with a $250 billion USD manufacturing sector. And remember about Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister is MK Stalinji and Governor is RN Raviji. Moving to next, next is our one-liner important point. Here is the first point. RB extends car tokenization deadline by three months till the 30th of September 2022. We already covered this question. Next is China's Navy has the world largest fleet to build a naval facility in Cambodia. So China is secretly building a naval facility on the northern portion of the Cambodia's naval base that would help extend its military currently limited reach in the foreign waters. And China commands the world largest naval fleet with more than 350 vessels compared to the US Navy has 296 ships and the submarines. And China currently has only one foreign naval base which is situated in Djibouti and it is in the East Africa. So the project in the Cambodia would give China a foothold in the Southeast Asia and a position in the western region of the South China Sea, part of the China's ambition to grow its military influence worldwide. Next is new book titled Gautam Adani, The Man Who Changed India, authored by very famous business journalist R.N. Baskar. Just read this line but we already covered this question in detail. RB extends car tokenization. Again, we covered this question. US Canadian author and Zen Buddhist priest Ruth Ozeki won the Women's Prize for Fiction 2022. Again, we covered this question. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Stalinji inaugurated Tamil Nadu Advanced Manufacturing Conclave. Again, we covered this question. This was the last question of the day. So, moving to the question of the day. What was the question of 24th of June 2022? Who is appointed as the new Chief Election Commissioner of India? So just remember, he was the 25th Chief Election Commissioner and name of this person is Dr. Rajiv Kumar. So answer of this question is C. So he is appointed as the new Chief Election Commissioner, then Rajiv Kumar and uh, two other election commissioners are, one is Anup Kumar or Anup Chandra Pandey, second position is currently vacant. So he is the 25th Chief Election Commissioner of India. Moving to next question, next is question of the day, who is appointed as the Chairman of the National Commission for Minorities? So you have to tell me answer only in the comment box. I am waiting your answer. But please like this video, share this video and please subscribe our channel. And you can join our all platforms like uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and our Telegram channel which is very special because you can attempt quiz on daily basis and you can also get the information which is provided on Telegram channel. And don't take life so much serious. Life is fun. Always be happy. Thank you guys.